And thank you all very much for coming. I'm Joyce Jew. I am the soon to be sworn in 2008 president of the San Francisco Professional Food Society. Our other president is um, sunbathing in Bali. So <laughs> here I am. You've got me this t tonight. Tonight is the first of our um, Staring the Pot series, and it's a speaker series. It's a um, sal salon style event to focus on professional enhancement and development and to have a dialogue with renowned speakers in the food industry, like the ones we have over here. So we really hope to have some fun and lively discussion, and, and we want to do a format that's casual and, and really stirs the pot, maybe. So, um, so what we have are passionate cooks and, and I think a room full of passionate eaters. Um, but one way I thought I would get at it in the beginning, in, in, in a lighthearted way, is um, to ask them um, to say why, in a short answer format, why is it so hard to get good, authentic food um, in the US? Is it the language barrier? Is it the long history and diverse history of the Chinese diaspora in the US? Are there economic factors? Is it the complexity of the cuisine itself, the many regions? Um, is the reason embedded in the historical American response to immigrants and their cuisines? Um, is it the restaurant culture in the U.S. that, that you know, protein-centered big hunk of meat thing? Um, Just one person's opinion. It's, it seems to me that it's a combination of a lot of the factors you mentioned, the very real history of decades and decades of the chefs who came from China and, of course, limitations on immigration by Chinese exclusion characterized many of those decades. But working with ingredients they had at hand, they created a hybrid cuisine that I've heard chefs refer to in Mandarin as Meguren, the Kowei food cooked to American taste, which in, their, in, in many chefs' minds is different from food cooked to Chinese taste. We've become accustomed to that. It seems to me that Chinese American food, American style Chinese food has become almost a comfort food in our culture. Perhaps you could view it as an exotic fast food. You know how with fast food, one of the attractions of it is that it's reliably the same. I know when I go to foreign cities, I feel comforted by the fact that if I get a cup of Starbucks coffee, it, it will taste as I expect it to. And I often wonder if that's perhaps one reason why so many Chinese chefs here report trying to offer Chinese taste dishes on their menu and yet feeling frustrated because diners have difficulty being adventurous enough to try those dishes and move past those comfortable dishes that they know. But I also feel like restaurateurs and chefs perhaps need to reach further to give the diner a chance. Many diners are adventurous and as Olivia has often written about, some of the great dishes and the, the real Chinese style dishes are relegated to Chinese menus or even just specials written in Chinese on the wall. And so finding out where to go, when you get there, finding out what to order, these are perhaps more difficult tasks for the diner than they need to be. And the diner needs to be more adventurous. And I, I know that you and I were on uh, a panel uh, last year where somebody referred to Chinese food as still being in the red checkered Italian restaurant <laughs> stage. Um, so you walk in and you want your spaghetti and meatballs. Right. Um, so maybe that's where it is. Where, what about you, Al? What, why is it so hard to get an authentic Chinese meal? It's difficult in some cities, but some cities we do have very good authentic Chinese yeah. food. So I don't think it's a blanket uh, statement that you can get good Chinese food. Um, I think uh, Nicole just touched on the fact that um, that for a number of years, our country, uh, from 1882 to 1943, we, our government, uh, uh, enacted a series of exclusion acts that uh, excluded Chinese from this country. And so the food during that period, un until 1963, uh, 65, when immigration was uh, equalized, was basically from the region of South China. And, and the, the, the images that you see on television and everything are the, the typical chop suey, uh, egg, egg rolls, egg fuyong, uh, and all the other sweet and sour pork. So that stayed throughout the images throughout you know, um, our country. So people are used to eating that food. 
it was not until post 65 we have new immigrants and then uh, the, 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 the variety of uh, groups that come here and the richness of the cuisines are start uh, are we beginning to see today uh, food from all parts of regional China and so forth and Taiwan but um, I think that's that's one and there's a disconnect I think with yeah. with, with, with uh, Chinese cuisine and American taste um, uh, people don't think of Chinese cuisine is uh, uh, like the Chinese do in China. So that's, that's my take on it. Um, those, are, those are two issues, I think, that are certainly alive. Just, just to um, break this up a little bit, I, I, wa I want to ask each one, some of you have already spoken, that what is the one dish you wish you did not see on a Chinese-American menu? <laughs> <laughs> you guys. All right, I'm going to go for it. I mean, <laughs> uh, Basically, not to name a particular dish itself, but more along the line of like, you know, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start with that, that um, in itself. Chicken, what, what is it that every time we order uh, a chicken dish with, you know, or with asparagus, it has to be chicken breast that's velvet, a, you know, that's dredged in cornstarch and, and just uh, cooking oil, you know. Chicken breast is the most boring piece of, uh, <laughs> I don't think I can say really say the word. Eh? <laughs> My mom used to call it the dead meat, <laughs> um, and uh, she was glad that she raised two kids who really do not like chicken breast. But chicken with bones, you know, the the wings, the thigh, the drumstick, you know, uh, or even you roast a chicken and you pick it up and you start nibbling through that little pieces of meat, and you feel alive. Right, mm -hmm. same principle here, you know, and I I think that it's just yeah you know, it's such a I don't, maybe it's just comfort <coughs> thing for the rest of America, but you really look at it and say hey you know what this if I you know bones are good it give you the flavor in the dish itself why do you make mm -hmm. chicken stock with bones you know that's the reason why all that flavor the texture you, know, you put it in your mouth you you know your tongue gets work and everything. Everything becomes alive. Besides, it's good for your, your muscle tone. <laughs> uh, it's good exercise. So, but um, the other thing is fish. Why is it that in America, when you put a, fi a whole fish, the head and the tail, the fins and everything on there, people are freaked out? I've had people who ordered a whole fish, OK? And I'm not kidding you. And you put that dish in front of them, this lady screamed so loud, <laughs> fell backwards and cut herself on the head. Um, if you go to China, you go to Hong Kong, you go to any fine dining Chinese restaurant, there is no sauce left on the plate. Right. A truly good technician of Chinese cuisine, they just put enough sauce to coat the protein and nothing left on the plate. Okay? If they have too much sauce, that means this is half trained technician. The problem is also has a lot to do with the way we eat in Chinese restaurant. You go to a typical Chinese restaurant in China or Hong Kong, they never, never serve you rice. When you serve rice in this country, you order dish and they give you a big bowl of rice. And you, before you eat, you put a whole bunch of rice and the rice is plain, okay? It's supposed to cleanse your palate. Even you eat rice, you should not have a big bowl of rice right next to you. But in many, many occasions, you order one dish meal. And then you put a dish here, and you have a lot of sauce to mix them all up. Or people, before they even taste, they put soy sauce on the, on the fried rice. And, and even in fried rice, they put uh, 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 so, so first of all, they don't really truly understand how to appreciate Chinese cuisine. Secondly, is the way it's being served. And two, in fact, most of the time you go to Hong Kong, you go to Maine, they, they only serve rice towards the end. Yes. Just to fill, give you a feel, just to fill you up. Noodle and rice is always served towards the very end in any Chinese, yep. a decent Chinese meal or Chinese banquet.